Well, hello. So we're back to talk more about Pythagorean theorem. So please absolutely make sure that you have done the last lesson because I went over what the Pythagorean theorem is, how to use it. Um, so if you haven't done that one yet, make sure you go back and do the last one right before this. Um, but otherwise, just very, very quickly, in a right triangle, remember that the 90 degree angle always points towards the hypotenuse, which we're putting in as C. The other two sides are A and B. Doesn't matter which one, you can alternate those two. So this side could literally be A or B. Same thing here, this one could be A or B. Doesn't matter, but C has to be the hypotenuse. It has to be the side that the 90 degree angle is pointing at, okay? So just remember that. So when we go to do one like number one here, okay, just like we did yesterday, it might be helpful to go ahead and label A, B, and C. So I almost always start with C, right? That side has to be C. A and B don't matter. You could call this side A and this side B if you wanted, or if you swap those two, doesn't matter. It's just that the side marked five in this case has to, has to, has to be C. Okay, that's so important because if you don't put that in the right spot, you're going to get all of these wrong. <laughs> and I don't want you to get them all wrong. Okay, so in this scenario, we are not trying to find the hypotenuse that gave it to me. It's five. So I'm trying to find this missing side over here. So one thing to think about before we start is that remember that the hypotenuse has to be the longest side of the triangle. Has to be. So that means whatever this number is, is going to be something less than five. What it is, I don't know, but it is going to be less than five. And if it's not, I've done something wrong. Okay, so um, how do we find it? You're going to use Pythagorean theorem pretty much the same way that you did in the last lesson. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And I'm still gonna fill in what I know. A is the side that I don't know, but I'm going to replace it with an X. B is marked as four, so I'll put that in as four squared, and C is marked as five, so that'll go in as five squared. So now the difference here, oh, I'm still gonna square whatever I can, so let's do that. So X squared, I do know what four squared is, that's 16, and I do know what five squared is, that's 25. So now I'm here, and um, now I basically just have this quadratic equation that I need to solve. I wanna get the x squared by itself. So in order to do that, I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides, right? Remember you wanna get the variable that's being squared all by itself. So 25 minus 16 is going to leave me at a positive nine. And now all I have to do is come in and take that square root of both sides. So I just get x equals three. And we also talked in the last video about um, I don't want positive and negative three, right? Because normally I would, right? If I was just doing a math problem and I took the square root of nine, it would be positive and negative three. But I don't want to take positive and negative roots here because remember that X represents the side of a triangle. And the side of a triangle can't be negative. So I only want the positive root in this case. All right, so three, is uh and it's yards in this case and that makes sense it's less than five so yep that sounds good so let's go ahead and try the second one okay so again i'm going to start off by labeling the three sides so right across from that 90 degree angle has to be c a and b you can put them whichever one, wherever you like. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a this time is 4.6. Gonna square that. b is the one I don't know, so I'm gonna replace it with x. And c is 10.6. Okay, I'll ask my calculator to do the squaring for me. So I need to do 4.6 squared, which gets me 21.16. X squared is just gonna stay. And then 10.6 squared is 
Okay, and now I have this quadratic equation that I want to get solved, so let's get the x squared by itself. So in this case, we'll subtract the 21.16. Okay, so it looks like x squared is going to end up being 91.2. And then, just like always, the last thing I have to do is sneak in and do those square roots. So x is going to be 9.5. We're in centimeters here. And that is a reasonable answer, because remember that c is supposed to be the biggest, and it still is. So 9.5 is certainly reasonable. Okay, let's try number three. All right, so on this worksheet, I sort of mixed them together. And this one does have me solving for the hypotenuse. Okay, so make sure you stay on your toes and just whichever one they're asking for, we're going to put it in where we need to. So across from that 90 degree angle is always my hypotenuse that has to be C. The other two, pick one to be A, pick one to be B. All right, let's throw them in the formula and see what comes out. So A is 12, B is nine, and C I'm putting in as X. Okay, so 12 squared is 144, nine squared is 81, 144 and 81, Get me 225. So, just like usual, sneak in, square root both sides. I get x equals the square root of 225, just so happens to be 15. By the way, fun fact while I'm thinking about it did you know that when your three sides of a right triangle come out to be nice whole numbers? like 9, 12, 15, for example. That's something called the Pythagorean triple. Oh, well, now you know if you didn't. So we had the same thing in number one, I think it was. That one, oops, jeez. This one had, this value was a three. So that's another Pythagorean triple. This is actually my favorite one, the three, four, five. Okay, don't be lulled into a false sense of security though, because if you saw something like this, if it was like if this was six, seven, a lot of kids just assume, well, that's got to be eight because it works with three, four, five. Not true, it doesn't work there. So the only one that has three in a row like that is the three, four, five. Very cool. Um, and what you can do with the Pythagorean triple, since I'm talking about it, I might as well just keep going. You can take a Pythagorean triple and multiply all three numbers by the same number and get a new right triangle. So if I multiplied all of those numbers by two, I'd get six, eight, ten. That makes another right triangle. Multiply them all by, I don't know, ten if you wanted, 30, 40, 50. That's another right triangle. So cool. So three, four, five isn't the only Pythagorean triple. There's lots of them. Um, but that's the easiest one. And it comes up all the time. Super fun. Anyway, okay. We just, so yeah, so we did three. Let's check out four. Okay, four is not going to be, the, be a Pythagorean triple because we've got decimals already. Uh, let's see. So across from that 90 degree angle is going to be C. And then the other two sides, pick one to be A, pick one to be B. Let's see. A is 14.5. B is the one I don't know, I'll put it in as X, and C is 15.7. Ask Mr. Calculator to help me out here. Whoops, wrong button. 14.5 squared, 210.25. I don't know what X squared is, and then we'll do 15.7 squared. That's 246.49. All right, we'll come on in and subtract the 210.25 from both sides. See what is left. 
two. I get 36.24. Okay, and then last thing I have to do is take those square roots of both sides. And x is just 6.0. Does it make sense in my problem? Yes, it does. It was certainly supposed to be less than 15.7 and 6.0 certainly is. Okay, so give these a shot. Let me know if you have questions.